if you thought there was going to be any like signs of hope for Denver, Jaden McDaniels just did away with that going into the <laughs> half. And it was like, this thing, you felt like early in that game, you felt like, bro, one team is moving at 200% and one team's moving at about 25%. Just absolutely shocking result <laughs> last night in Denver, Minnesota. 115 to 70. Minnesota beats Denver to force a game seven. They hold Denver to 30% from the field. They hold Denver to 19% from three. They out rebound them 62 to 43. An absolute utter domination in this game and now we are going to get a game seven this is uh what we expected at the beginning of the series is that we would probably see a game seven between these two awesome teams how we got there is certainly unexpected i mean a 45 point blowout of all results just shocking and you know I didn't see all of the game live last night because I was at the concert. I rewatched it this morning and last night. Dude, that first quarter run by Minnesota where they really built that lead, the defensive intensity, the offensive execution, I felt like there was, a, there was one play that they had. It was after the timeout that Denver called. Denver called a timeout. They're down 26 to 11 late in the first quarter. And this timeout's called, this is sometimes where, you know, the tone changes. You come out playing a different way. But Minnesota came out. Jaden McDaniels fights over a screen by Jokic to stick with Murray. Nas Reed and Anthony Edwards are flying around and help defense. And then there's another two-man game between Jokic and Murray within the same possession. And again, McDaniels fights over. Towns helps over on Yo on Murray on a drive. McDaniels recovers, blocks the shot, and then Anthony Edwards got the ball, dribbled it up, hit the pull up three, and I just felt like that play in the first quarter was reflective of the entire game, where it was no let up from Minnesota, and Anthony Edwards was just sensational the entire game. That one play, that one sequence, I felt like captured it all even after a timeout minnesota came out with more more of an intense effort on on both ends just better overall play that one play i thought summed it all up well and the crazy thing kevin is the game started off nine to two yeah, so you I you know. just you just marked it 26 to 11 <laughs> you, you could do the you could do the quick math they were on a 26 to 2 run. 26 Unbelievable. to 2. Look, that crowd in Minnesota gets the crowd of the playoffs award. They were on I think so too. absolute fire in this game. And their team responded in kind. And it was the weirdest sensation because as you're watching it unfold, obviously they get the boost from Mike Conley. And I thought it was hilarious after the game, you know, when Anthony Edwards is having to talk about everything that took place in this game. One of the things he said was, it's simple. We got Mike Conley back. That's it. And then they asked Mike Conley about it. And Mike Conley said, it was a team effort. We won by 45. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't make that much of a difference, right? Like, but but he, he does, though, Chris. He really the does. Point is, the point is, it's exactly what you want in a must-win game, which is your crowd is on fire, and you jump on the other team and end it quickly to where they're going to have to be playing catch-up the whole time. So even if they... they muster the effort to get back in the game. It still just takes so much effort to get back in the game and focus on both ends to get back in the game that you're usually able to hang on. When you get up by that many points early in a game, uh, I know that we uh, you know, live in an NBA where no lead is safe, but that felt different. That felt like they stepped on their neck right away 
And then even at the end of the half, when you much like how Murray had hit that crazy half court three, the half ends with this energy play where McDaniels grabs the offensive rebound and dunks it back in. And I remember Ryan Rucco, who was the announcer, saying, you know, if you thought there was going to be any like signs of hope for Denver, Jaden McDaniels just did away with that going into the <laughs> half. And it was like this thing you felt like early in that game, you felt like, bro, one team is moving at 200 percent and one team's moving at about 25 percent. And that is, you know, if they lose game seven. Denver's going to look back on that crazy flat effort because while Minnesota was so locked in defensively, so locked in offensively, Denver was like lethargic. You go back and you watch it because I went back and watched like the first quarter this morning. These guys aren't even like in defensive stances. They're like standing around where they're supposed to be. Porter's lazy. Gordon's lazy. You know, the first play of the game, they just throw a lob dunk to Gobert over Jokic's head. Like, nobody was moving around with a level of, uh, you know, they say you got to have, like, laser focus. Minnesota brought that to the table, and Denver was just, they were ridiculous. They were just two different teams than what we saw that won those last three. You know, I think one of the most interesting trends in this series, you know, hitting kind of the same note you are, Chris, when it comes to that intensity is think about over the this two-year run with Denver, and even prior, but this two-year run specifically with the five-man starting lineup, Aaron Gordon, KCP, Jamal Murray, Michael Porter, and Nikola, Nikola Jokic. That five-man lineup, this regular season, had a 13.6 net rating. They were dominant playing together. However, in their three games against Minnesota during the regular season, that starting lineup had a minus 14.3 net rating. During the playoffs in the first round against the Lakers, they were a plus 8.9. In this round against Minnesota, they're a minus 21.4 with a 106.5 offensive rating, a 127.9 defensive rating. The five-man Denver starting lineup that was dominant last regular season, dominant last playoffs, has really not played well against Minnesota. Now, for nine games, not well, just the six in these playoffs, but three during well, the season as well. And I, I think just there's the way they're getting off the starts, the, the way in which Minnesota is creating that edge. But you got to extract some... the three they won, Kevin, because look, they've got an 80 point game and a 70 point game. Logged into those numbers. Well, well right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yes, yes. Like, I mean, if you want me to, I can grab the, the net rating from their three wins specifically. I'll do that right now. So May 10th to May 14th. That that I'll grab specifically those games for the starting lineup in this series. I'm you know what Denver right hey, and you know what Denver fans would tell you? Pull the non- Mark Davis games. That's the Denver sure. fans are. Uh, they're like, oh yeah, coincidence. We've had our worst offensive games in the world when Mark Davis. I love that somebody hates Mark well, Davis. It, it, in but those, in he, those plus, in those three games, Chris, plus sixteen point three. Okay. So, but but the point is that, and that means in six out of nine of them, no, but they it have can not be good. great. It can be. It great. can be great. It can it's be not great. a lineup it problem, be. is what I'm saying. I'm not saying it is a lineup problem. It's just a weird trend. The fact that they're negative against Minnesota <laughs> of, of 30 teams. <laughs> well, they got beat it's, by 45. It's... The numbers are going to be crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? They got beat. They got yeah, but drilled. I, po po point is, it happened during the season. It's happening now. They've had two of their lowest point totals. I mean, look, they hadn't been held under 80. That was their previous low. And then they got held to 70. In this game, uh, Murray was a dog. He was one for 10 in the first half, ends up three for 18. Um, and then, obviously, uh, they got the other guys chipping in for Minnesota. McDaniels was brilliant. He's eight of 10, three of five from three. Their bench, which had not been the advantage that we had thought it was going to be, 
uh, through the first five games of the series was brilliant. 36 to nine in bench points. I mean, it's just an utter and complete domination. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, J- Justin Holiday, 0 for 5 tonight. Justin Holiday went from shooting like Ray Allen to shooting like Justin Holiday again. Well, and the thing is, it's like, and and I think this is one of the things that we have busted up Boston for. It's like, and and look, Dallas, it felt this way too with the Luka thing, which we're going to get to, which is, why do I have to, why does your back have to be against the wall for me to get your greatest performance, right? Why, why does it have to be that your back's against the wall? And it feels like Denver has really played with fire here. Now, everybody expects, I don't know if you noticed, but, Nikola Jokic stood in the corner of the court for the entire, entire force. fourth. He never sat down. Entire force. It was like a bad guy in a movie. And so, of <laughs> course, everybody is sitting there believing, like, okay, we know he's got it in him. The same way that we saw the Luka response in game five after the dismal game four, it's like, we know what's coming. And we will see. But There were certainly some very good adjustments that were made by Minnesota that threw a wrench in things. The Uh, doubling. And the doubling was so good. And and having Towns on go or having Towns on Jokic rather and letting Gobert roam is the trick. Like it's it's a much it's a they were and even Mike Honora said in their first quarter uh, interview, like basically we need to bring more doubles, but we're going to let Jokic, you know, we're, we're not going to give him the extra attention and we're going to, and we're going to live with it. Obviously we need to do a better job on him, but we're going to live with it. And in this game, having Gobert as the roamer makes him a real rim protection, you know, where he can't be pulled away from the basket and they're going to have to go back to figuring out what they're going to do with Aaron Gordon and how he can make that a problem for Minnesota. The adjustments in this thing are going to be very fascinating because Towns, if he stays out of foul trouble, and this is what Edwards was saying in his press conference, if he stays out of foul trouble, <laughs> yeah. he's he's a very useful defender on Jokic. Well, that's one of the reasons why you're throwing double teams at him because right. it helps it helps keep Towns out of foul trouble. It gets the ball out of Jokic's hand quickly. It turns him into a playmaker. And they were they were sending those quick doubles from the top, whether it was Conley or McDaniels or Edwards coming over to help on him. They're going they weren't switching that Gordon Jokic two man action like they were in past games, because that's typically how Denver would get Gobert onto Jokic. And Minnesota just said, no, we're not going to switch it. We're going to go under. And maybe, maybe game seven, you see Jokic, you know, beat that under sometimes maybe he'll take a pull up more i can't imagine aaron gordon will be taking a pull up more uh, you, you, that's advantageous to minnesota unless he's having a perfect shooting night like he did in game five so i mean i think for the denver side of things the doubles the doubles are a little tougher to figure out though because it seems like minnesota i'd be surprised if they don't go back to that it might be the like how do you get how do you get Jokic switched on to go bear again? To me, that's the priority here. How do you make that happen? If, they, if they're not willing to switch it, maybe it comes from off ball instead of on ball. Right. But uh, I, th- I think that's going to be the priority there because that's what shifted in those other games. Sure. And that's what teams, you know, that's the adjustments. And these are two great teams. I will say well, this. And one other thing, Chris, one other quick thought, though, like maybe the adjustment for Minnesota then because they weren't really sending doubles when it was Jokic on Gobert. Maybe they just do that anyway. Maybe you mm-hmm. still send doubles when it's when Gobert is switched on to Jokic. That could be that could be what they just end up doing anyway. It doesn't matter that you're the defensive player of the year four time or Hall of Famer. We're still gonna double this offensive great. Well, and what was fascinating about Edwards giving Mike Conley all this credit and talking about how, Mm. hey, we had Mike Conley back and that was the difference is because Second Spectrum had some crazy stats on this. So, you know, he struggled in game five and they were running all these doubles at him. He's five for 15, 18 points, four turnovers. They had a stat and this is because Second Spectrum, you know, tracks this kind of stuff. He had 102 touches. That is the most times he had the ball 
the entire season, maybe ever in his life, with Conley back, 64 touches last night. The pressure he takes, because there's no one else to give the ball to. Edwards has to be responsible for everything, and so it made it easier for him. They're just running doubles at him, get the ball out of his hands. And now, with Conley there, and just being a guy that can uh, facilitate the offense, they don't have another real like facilitator of offense. And so, it, in, in the absence of Conley, it puts so much pressure on Edwards. And so now, him being off the ball and Conley being able to handle that role, that's why, you know, beyond whatever any number says, it is essential that they have Conley. And, of course, he was saying he couldn't even walk for game five. Just him being able to get out there and play makes it a different game for Minnesota and certainly something Denver is going to have to truly account for because they accounted well for life without Conley in game five. Obviously, th there's nothing they did well in game six. I mean, they're pitiful. They're pitiful on offense. They're pitiful on defense. And so it's like, was that so extreme that we can just write it off and say, okay, we know that was not even a minor representation of what we know they're capable of. And so we cannot expect that to be anything like it was in game seven. Or do you look at it as a real cause for pause that they had <laughs> such a dismal effort? Such a great phrase, yeah. cause for pause. I know you love that. <laughs> it, it just feels like an equalizer, and this is setting up to an epic game seven. That's the way I feel about it. Like we've we've seen in this series Minnesota dominate twice. We've seen Denver dominate once. We've seen some close matchups. I think we're setting up for an epic game seven, is what it feels like to me. And while something you said, like while you were talking about Conley. Made me think about the Edwards post game presser. Edwards, you know, talked like he said similar to you. Like Conley helped take the ball out of his hands, pushed him off ball. He didn't have to worry about playmaking. And he looked at the box score sheet. He's like, oh, I guess I still had four assists. I did my job. Um, but something he said within that context was like his mindset coming out tonight was to shoot everything. And he's like, I only had 17 shots. Like, <laughs> like he didn't have to shoot more. And it just made me think about what I said to you after his 25-shot 25, his 25 game, 44-point affair after game four, where I said, can he come out and do more? And I think that this game seven could be that moment. Game seven could be that moment where Ant comes out with that same mindset, I got to come out and shoot everything. This might be the 50-point game for Ant if Minnesota's going to win. Game seven might be that if it's a close down to the wire game where he does have to come out shooting everything, Conley creating for him, McDaniel's helping with screening actions, off ball, Towns hitting threes, go bear rolling. But Anthony Edwards will have to be the guy, just like Jokic will have to be the guy for Denver. That's what I feel like this is setting up to be is epic down and the that's, wire. With and that's what favors Denver is being yes. in this type of spot before, beyond being on their home mm -hmm. floor. Role players play better at home. Bench players play better at home. Typically, the other teams don't. Uh, it was an absolute bloodbath in game six, so the adjustments will be severe. The attention to detail and focus, like those those guys have been in must-win games and game <laughs> sevens a ton so of times. Good. A ton of times. If, if yeah. Look, the, the, the line is already posted. It's five right now, and I think five, that's fair. Wow. I think that's fair. Yeah. I mean, look, I expect Denver and with the best player on their home floor to win a game seven. If Minnesota pulls that off, it is legendary. Oh, Truly. For sure it is. It's legendary. Yeah. I mean, because mm -hmm. I, outside of T Wolves fans, who expects them to go win a game seven against Jokic on his home floor? <laughs> right? Like that, <laughs> the expectation is not high for that. And so yeah. we have seen this has been. A fun series to me. To that's watch. why. That's why this is the moment for Edwards. This is the moment for Anthony Edwards to take down Jokic, to take down this guy that people are comparing to Larry if Bird. He, if he does it at twenty-two, though, I think it's much more yeah. likely. I think it's much more likely that Edwards 
uh, out of character struggles in a game seven than goes for 50. Because so again, he's I'm, I'm, years willing old. To, I'm willing because to be he's surprised. 22. Well, and there yes. is just a, there is an attention to detail and a focus that veteran teams that have been there a million times, you will see a radically different Denver team than what we just saw. We have seen, when Denver's back has been against the wall and we saw it, in three must-win games for them that they played like it was a must-win. They played three like it was a must-win. They played four like it was a must-win because you got to even up the series. And they played five like it was a must-win. So, and, and it is frustrating, I think, as a fan when it takes that to get that out of your team. But I would fully expect that, obviously, this is, this is do or die. And you ain't going to see guys standing around on offense and giving up open dunks down the lane. That's not what happens in a game seven. And I hope it is a hard fought, you know, slug fest. Mm -hmm. Game sevens are also usually lower scoring and that could favor Minnesota. It could um, because that's how they dwell and they're a defensive team. And so I can't wait to watch it. I cannot wait to watch <laughs> I'm it. I'm so I, excited, dude. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I can't wait to watch it. Um, yeah, it's gonna be so awesome, man. I, I can't, I, I can't believe we're getting a game seven with the setup being a 45 point blowout. I'm just so excited for Sunday. I can't wait. 